Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to solve the 4x4 using the Yao method. Now I've just recently learned the Yao method and I think it is a really really cool method. I use it a lot and uh, it didn't take me too long to actually learn it, it's quite a simple method. So the Yao method is really intended for people that are quite bad at going from cross to F to L transitions and what this does is we solve the 4x4 part and then as we go into the 3x3 we will already have the white cross built. So what we're going to do in the Yao method to start with is we're going to build two centers and in this video that will be the white and the yellow centers. Then we're going to build three of the four white edges and then we're going to finish the centers. Then before we move on to edge pairing we're going to make the last of the white edges and then we're going to do edge pairing. After edge pairing we'll have the 4x4 part of the cube solved and we'll also have a white cross so we go straight into F2L. So if you're not too good at the transition from the cross to F2L this is a really good method for you and even if you are quite good at it I would still recommend at least trying out this method it is a really cool method and it's actually really really fun as well. So anyway, I do recommend you can solve the 4x4 using the reduction method because I will be uh, we will be building the centers, well the first two anyway, in the same way and you probably should be able to solve the 4x4 in about two minutes. Um, but yeah, so we start by building, like I said, two centers. So I'm going to start by building the white center. You should be able to know how to do that. And once we've done that, we go on and solve the yellow center. Okay, so now we have two centers built. And at this stage, we are going to now make three of the four white edges. As you can see, I already have one built here. So in this case, I'm only gonna have to do two. So I spot this white and orange edge, and I also spot this one. So what we're gonna want to do is line it up in a way that we can put them together. So as you can see, I've now moved it so these two can now match up. And we don't need to worry about the centers. And that's what we would worry about if we were doing this in the reduction method. But because we haven't built these yet, we don't have to worry about them. So what we're going to do is now that I've built this, I'm now going to move it onto the white center. Now we're going to want to put two of the three edges we build in the correct space. So we have this green one here. And we know that on a correct colour scheme, we have white, orange, green. So we're going to want to move the green around so that we can have that. Now what we're going to want to do is build another centre. So I spot this white and red here. And there's another white and red here. So in the same way, I'm going to match them up. And again, we don't need to worry about the centres. And you should know how to match them up from using the reduction method. As I said, we only put two of the three edges we build in the correct place, and I'll explain why later. But that means that once we've built the third edge, we're going to want to put it in the wrong place. So the right place to put it would be here, but because we're not putting it in the right place, we're going to want to move it across and put it in the wrong place, so it's next to the orange. Now you might build the edges in a different order, but you will need to remember which edge you did incorrectly. So, now that we've built those three edges and we have two centers done, we're going to want to build the rest of the centers. Now, this is the hardest part of Yao, I think, for most people, and it definitely was for me. But you do get used to it quite quickly, and then it's not very hard. So, what we're going to want to do is hold the white center with the edges we have sold correctly on our left side. And we're going to have the space where there's no solved edge on the U layer. And what we're going to want to do is build the edges using only these layers and the U layer. Now this might seem a bit confusing at first, but like I said, you do get used to it quite quickly. So I always solve the red center first, but however you can do whichever order you want. As long as you remember to keep the correct color scheme. So I see a red here and a red here. So how can I match these two up only using these layers 
and a U layer. Well, this is quite simple. I can simply move the U and we have it here. So I'm that's uh, so we need to find another two reds and there's two down here. But what we want to be careful of is not breaking up this edge and not messing up these edges. So I need to bring this one up here to where this uh, empty space is and then we can rotate it and match these up while keeping this in the correct place. But how are we going to get this up to here without messing it up or messing up these edges? Well, if we move it up to the empty space, rotate it, and then bring the red down, we now have the red one solved. Like I said, this can get very confusing, but it is very intuitive and you do get used to it. So I know that next to red, we have blue. And that's why I always solve red first. It goes red, blue, orange, green, and I always solve in that order. Now for blue, we've got quite lucky here because we have three of the four pieces, which means we only have one more to do. And if we find that, it's up here. So what we need to do is rotate this into the correct position so we can easily get it down here. So what we do this time is we move the right layer down. So now we can rotate this layer freely. I'm going to move it down here and then move just this layer up. Rotate it, making sure we don't mess up these edges. And then move it back up again. Now we have the red and the blue center solved. So finally we have the orange and the green and most most of the time we have them in blocks of two but sometimes we do have them in diagonals. Like I said it is intuitive and if you can't do it at first just play around with it a bit and you will get it eventually. So this is very easy to do. We can simply move the right side down and then uh, switch it around and put them in the correct place without having to worry about this. So then you have all your centers solved. You may be very slow at this to start with, but again, you will speed up at it and you will get better at it. So now that we've got all this solved, we are now going to want to solve the last white edge. So to do this, we're going to find them. So we have one white and blue here, and the other one over here, and we're going to want to line them up. Notice how I moved this empty space in the way of rotating, because if I was to move up the blue here, we would have moved this out of the way. And one thing we need to be very careful of is not messing up what we've already built. So now we need to remember that we made the white and the red and we put that one in the wrong place. So we're gonna match up the colors and then we're gonna move this edge up. But here's the tricky part. We are gonna move this white and blue into the red and orange place. Now the reason we do this is because we put the red in the wrong place so that we could easily move it out, turn it out the way and put it back in again. And then we can easily slice and we have it done. If we'd put the red in the correct place however, we would have had to kick out one of the correct edges and then we would have had to start again. So by putting one in the wrong place, we can kick that out and put it into its correct place and continue. So now we have the white cross done. And just by look, we have some of the corners in already, but we don't need to worry about that until the three by three solve. So now that we've finished that, we now move on to the edge pairing. So this, if you, if you use um, beginner's edge pairing, this is a lot different. Um, and if you use different types of advanced edge pairing, you may be new to this, but you might also uh, know what to do already. Now, obviously, we have four edges already solved, so that leaves only nine edges left. Um, so, what we're going to want to do is we are going to want to match up three edges and we can make them in one slice. So, I'll just do it first uh, just to show you. So, we have a yellow and green here. So if we were to slice this way, we would need a yellow and green here in order to make an edge. So we find that yellow and green which is up here and we put it in its correct place so that when we move across, that will be made. 
But another thing we need to worry about is this piece here. As this moves across, we have a green and an orange. So we need to find the green and orange, which is up here. We need to also put that into the correct place. So when we move across, we have these two and these two matched up. And then finally, we do one more, and that's the yellow and blue. So we will need a yellow and blue here, and just by coincidence, we already have it in here. If it wasn't there, we would have to find it somewhere in the top layer, and then put it in. So then we make the slice, and as you can see, we have one, two, three edges solved. Now this is the part that most people find quite difficult. We are obviously going to need to slice back this way in order to fix the centers. So what we do is we put it in such a way that when we move it back, we will make three other edges. So we find the edge that hasn't been made yet and that has a yellow and orange. So because we're moving the top layer back, we need to find another yellow and orange. And we find that here. And we're going to put that in the right place so that when we slice back, it will make the edge. But again, like we did on the first slice, we also need to do that with these pieces. So we have a red and a green. So we're going to want to put the red and the green in the correct place. So again, when we slice back, it will be made. And then we do it one more with this piece, and that is the blue and orange. So we're going to want to put the blue and orange in the right place and when we slice back we'll have three more edges made. Now if you already have an edge made when you start edge pairing which means that you'll have five total edges made you won't have two left. If you do however have two left it's a simple parity algorithm that you will know from the reduction method and that will successfully solve edge pairing and you'll also have this cross here. And then you simply go on to the 3x3 three three part of the solve, and then you're ready to finish. Do bear in mind that you will still run into parity on the 3x3 three three part of the solve, and you will need to know the algorithm for it if you don't. But overall, I think this is definitely a better method for me because I am quite slow at cross the F2L trans transitions. Um, again, like I said, if you can't, if you can do a cross to F2L quite quickly, I still recommend trying out uh, this method. Um, I was getting about two minutes to two and a half minutes on reduction method, and then when I started this, I started getting one and a half minutes. So it is a really, really good and interesting method. Anyway, I hope you have found this tutorial helpful. If you guys need any more help, for example, like a walkthrough solve or something, I'd be happy to help. Just leave a comment or personal message me, and I'll make that video in the future. Anyway, guys, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.